Right now we don't have a cap on the amount of carbon pollution. So we said we're going to cap it. Oil companies, not wild about it. Uh, coal companies, not crazy about it. America's greatness has always been rooted in our creative minds and entrepreneurial spirit, our ability to make things, make the most of our resources, to control our economic destiny. That's why you see Republicans working so hard to capitalize on America's energy renaissance. We're back with our panel. We're going to start off talking about uh, energy policy and what it does for races in the fall. Charles, when you think of folks like Senator Mary Landrieu and others, uh, in a tough spot. When the president speaks like that, it hurts all of them. When he says we have to put a cap on can or, or carbon p pollution, what he means is that the use of fossil fuels, which he himself has admitted will raise energy rates, utility rates, and kill jobs. If Republicans can make that civil case, they, they will greatly enhance their chances in November. What say you, Juan? It's energizing the Democratic base overwhelmingly, and it gets big money from some of the top Democratic donors. It sure does. All right, now, today we are also going to look at some of the Fourth of July traditions of our panelists, and I love kicking off with what Steve Hayes has going on for Fourth of July. Steve? Every year we take our family to the Shadyside, Maryland, 4th of July parade. It was mm -hmm. a town that about 5,000 people on the Chesapeake Bay. My family lived there for a few years. And they, the parade is basically just a collection of whoever wants to join the parade. So we have <laughs> kind of the hairdresser, the handyman, the Corvette club, the churches. You've got Uncle Sam there on a tractor, Uncle apparently. Sam on a tractor pulling some kind of a boat. And uh, last year we had a guy who was just trying to sell his Jeep. So he put a for sale <laughs> sign on his Jeep. <laughs> Put America. it in the parade, and you know, it is, it is quintessential America. So Shady Side, Maryland, is the, is the place to be on Fourth. That July. looks like a lot of fun. Juan, what about you? We go down to the mall here in Washington D.C., and it's typically packed. But I got to tell you, even when my mom was alive, you know, a little old lady, we would take her down there, and boy, I tell you, you just. It's awe-inspiring at times, and the crowd, just like a thousand friends gathered for that celebration. It is, and the music is amazing, and the fireworks, oh. I've never seen anything like it. Just when you think you've got the finale, there are about 20 more left mm -hmm. behind it. It is a beautiful thing. Charles, what about you? At dusk, we hand out to our guests laminated copies of the Declaration of Independence, which we read line by line. Original? Sequentially. Well, <laughs> you know those long S's yeah, that yeah. look like F's? The F's. Mm -hmm. And get pronounced like F's often. <laughs> yeah. And we read the last paragraph in unison about uh, our lives, our property, our sacred honor, our fortunes, our, our sacred honor, and then we eat ourselves under the table. Love it. What time should we be there? <laughs> <laughs> we're going right after the show. Right. We're going to the parade, then we're going to the fireworks, then we're going to the <laughs> I, I, I've got a Jeep i got to sell, too. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be in the parade. All right, so now we have a little time to talk about your winners and losers. Steve, who have you got this week? My loser, I think, is pretty obvious. It's Nouri al-Maliki, who is a leader without followers, a man without a country, and who is just at the beginning of what's going to be uh, hell in Iraq in the coming months. My winner is Billy Hurley who's a PGA Tour golfer, mm -hmm. and shot a 7-under-63 today at the Greenbrier Classic. That alone is enough to qualify him as the winner of the week. The reason he's the winner this week, the fact that he shot that on the 4th of July, he's also a U.S. Naval Academy graduate uh, who served on active duty as a surface warfare officer from 2004 to 2009 and didn't golf from 2006 wow. to 2009. Now he is on the PGA Tour. He is the clubhouse leader at the Greenbrier Classic on the 4th of July. Hats off to him. Excellent. All right, Juan. Wow, it's hard to beat that guy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the losers this week, I think, are on the Supreme Court, Shannon. Uh, Justices Kagan, Sotomayor, and Ginsburg, uh, who yesterday wrote a scathing dissent because they felt that the conservative majority, the men, as they put it, had deceived them uh, earlier in the week when they lost on the Hobby Lobby case. So uh, the ladies are in a fury, and by their own admission, the losers of the week. All right, quickly. You're and the winner, I think, is the June job numbers and the economy. Wall Street is just booming. Jobs are adding. It looks like our economy is finally revived. All right, quickly, Charles. Winner, religious liberty, the Hobby Lobby decision. The government can give away all the stuff at once, but it can't force people to be engaged in giving away stuff which uh, they have religious objections to. Mm -hmm. The loser of the week is sovereignty. The Russians are impinging on the sovereignty of Ukraine. 
uh, ISIS on the sovereignty of all the borders in the Middle East, and Central Americans are just impinging on the sovereignty of the United States, uh, ignoring the border, uh, and everything that's being done in in Washington is a m magnet encouraging. All right, we, we got to leave it stop. there. All right, that is it for the panel.